Every day, your City of Tempe staff goes above and beyond to make sure our community gets the best possible services and the most for our tax dollars. But how good is good? How do you measure it? And how do we know what we really need to make progress on some of our most pressing issues? To guide us, we developed a series of goals designed to help us improve our community based on our Tempe City Council's five strategic priorities. Reaching for excellence, we are comparing ourselves against the rest of the nation as well as ourselves. Some of our goals will help save lives. Some of them will help us save money. All of them will help us make Tempe a better place. Tempe Accelerates is an opportunity for you to get involved. Hear what city staff and community partners are doing to reach our goals. Your role? You are a vital part of our community. Share your ideas and help us craft better solutions. Ask questions. Be part of the conversation either in person or online. Check tempe.gov slash tempeaccelerates for dates and times of our next programs and collaborate with us at Tempe City Hall. Today, we will hyper-focus on two performance measures. Each presenting team will have 10 minutes to share data, strategies, and progress on a performance measure. Then, you will have about 10 minutes to ask questions or offer suggestions and ideas. On the back of your agenda, we have resource questions to help you participate in the conversation. Also included with your agenda is a quick survey with space you can use to include any ideas or suggestions you might have about today's topics. Thank you for participating. Now, let's accelerate. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another session of Tempe Accelerates. We are a data-driven strategy session to promote community and employee-driven innovation, collaboration, and organize organization-wide support for the achievement of the council priorities, performance measures, and to see what community impact we achieve. Today, we are pleased to have two items to uh, present. First is Performance Measure 2.07, Counseling Service Referral Rate, Addressing Trauma and Crisis Through Counseling, followed by Performance Measure 2.13, Employee Engagement, Creating an Involved and Caring Workforce. It looks like the team for the first performance measure is ready to go. So without further ado, we will turn to them. They'll have 20 minutes. There'll be roughly 10 minutes for questions. Uh, and then we'll have the uh, second team do the same. If you don't get a chance to answer, to ask questions, there's feedback forms in the back. Please grab those and fill out whatever feedback you can give the teams before you leave today. Thank you. Welcome. I am Kristen Charlo, a human services manager uh, overseeing the CARE 7 program, which includes counseling services. And I'm Anya Salas. I am the social services counselor chairperson. And this is, as our city manager said, the um, two point Performance Measure 2.07, it's under Council Priority Number 2, which is Strong Community Connections. And the performance measure reads, we will achieve a rate of 85% of counseling clients who report an increased ability to cope as measured by a four or greater on a five-point scale. <clears throat> so why does this measure matter? And there are innumerable reasons why this measure should matter to all of us. But um, mostly this is about our commitment to assisting the residents of this community with their ability to cope and heal after a traumatic event or a crisis. Uh, we feel that this uh, counseling services reduce the impact of uh, mental health issues that many people in our community have, including, including our children. Uh, we feel that it's important to reduce the barriers for everybody to access these services. You don't have to have insurance or money for a copay or transportation. We want to make these things uh, go away so that people can get the services that they deserve. And because the city of Tempe is a beautiful place to live, work, and play, and that um, this is important for us to be trauma-informed and to have the best place for people to live and have um, the best, highest quality services. <clears throat> so where are we? Um, we initially had a performance measure that was focused on process. So we were looking at how quickly we could get in touch with potential clients. Um, but after some analysis, we decided to focus on outcomes because they have a greater impact. 
So our initial survey indicated that 77% of respondents um, believed that they had an increase in their coping skills. <clears throat> so we kept our focus on coping skills. Um, we wanted to help people deal with everyday life. When we're talking about resilience, we're just talking about the ability to deal with difficult situations and then grow from them. So coping skills are a way for people to deal with adversity and stress and be able to live their everyday lives. And so we can then have an impact on the individual and then the larger community. <clears throat> so uh, we made our target 85%. So why did we do that? Um, first, we adjusted our survey question, which you'll see on the next slide, um, to be more specific. So we're gonna be using a five point scale and what we anticipate is to see a normal distribution there. Um, then we looked at our strengths and so the city of Tempe's models, biggest strengths are, as we mentioned some already, we make it easy to access services. We also um, <clears throat> reduce stigma and we're local and we make, and we have an affordable cost. So that combined with our staff who's caring and kind and work to not re-traumatize individuals, um, makes the city of Tempe's Care 7 counseling services a real unique experience that you won't find anywhere else. So then we looked at a bell curve and we um, looked at average and decided to go above average, so 85%. Anya looked at the bell curve. <laughs> um, so here you can see our previous data. We were taking surveys um, at the initial session and then at the end of counseling. Um, so there were some limitations to that. One, we don't always know when someone's going to stop coming to counseling, so that limited our data. And um, if you look at the question, it doesn't indicate whether counseling is the reason for the increase. So when we redesign uh, the question, you'll see it below. Um, <clears throat> we made it more measurable, so we could um, now take a look at um, more specific data, and then we also take the surveys once a month now and still at the end of treatment, so we have more. Oh, that's a little bit hard to see, but this is just some really early preliminary data. Um, <clears throat> we hope to have a more substantive baseline by the end of October, so this is just showing the five-point scale and the current, um, it's promising. So. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so our strategies. Um, so staying up to date with current methods, um, ensuring that we are trained in um, trauma-informed care and finding ways to be compassionate from the beginning of counseling services all the way through the end. Um, <clears throat> promoting a sense of sa uh, safety, safety and security and developing programs that help increase um, opportunities for people to increase their coping skills, so arts, yoga, groups, um, and then using EMDR to deal with trauma. So EMDR is, stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. It's a type of therapy that deals with trauma and it's approved by the World Health Organization. Um, <clears throat> and if you don't know what it is, basically a real simple explanation is that when a disturbing event happens, um, the brain stores that in a way that our system feels like the event is possibly going to happen at any moment or is happening now. So when you have the original event and then another event that's similar or has just a couple of features um, happens, the brain activates and um, feels as if the original event is happening again currently. So EMDR just helps us take the memory and um, move it to a more functional place so that the individual can deal with the present without the past interfering. We have a link at the end of the um, presentation. Watch it. It puts it in layman's terms that are really easy to understand. So it's in a cartoon. So uh, it's, very, it, um, it, it's very helpful, though, for people uh, to understand why it's so heavily utilized, especially in our population that suffers from PTSD. 
So the challenges. We have um, a lot of good things, but we have a few challenges that we hope to address. Mm -hmm. um, so some of those are no-shows, clients not showing up to their appointments, clients um, <clears throat> dropping out of the counseling process. So some ways that we're addressing that, trauma-informed care, finding ways to be compassionate throughout the counseling continuum, um, um, appointment reminders when we can, and um, some of the other challenges have to do with the need to increase long-term staff. So one of the things that we, you keep hearing about trauma-informed care, but part of the process is to take people from the original 911 call and the, and the crisis and uh, hand them to other CARE 7 staff along the way, whether that's from the van to our victim advocates, who then hand it to the counseling department, but it's all the same organization, and we do it in a as quick as quickly as we can, because what we know is that if you give people a lot of time to think about it, they'll opt out. Counseling, uh, for those of you that were here for the victim advocacy performance measure, I used a dentist analogy, but the thing about counseling is it's very helpful. We all know that it's really hard. All counselors have tissues readily available on their on their desk because it, it's hard to relive these things and talk about them and go through it but it's necessary for healing and getting past it so um, the more compassionate and caring and trauma-informed we make the process the better we are able to get them all the way through to the end and not lose them So how do we accelerate our results? Um, for one, understand that mental health is social, emotional, psychological well-being, and that's for all of us. So you can help us reduce the stigma so that we can all access help when we need it. Um, number two, um, know that CARE 7 Counseling Services is a um, <clears throat> unique and valuable program for the reasons that I already mentioned, and because it's connected to other CARE 7 programs and other human services programs. Um, so just imagine a place where you feel cared for and safe and um, that there's people there who have experience who are gonna be there from the beginning of your treatment all the way to the end and who are gonna be there when you refer your friends and family. And that's a valuable experience. So just imagine how many people's coping skills we could help increase um, Last fiscal year, we saw we had 1,623 appointments. We have one uh, full-time counselor, me, uh, a part-time admin, and three interns. And that's how many people we saw. So just imagine how many more people we could help with their coping skills and um, the, the community, what kind of a resilient community we could create. We do have a new victim services counselor. She started um, in August. So she will see uh, only victims of crime. It doesn't have to be a reported crime, and it doesn't. There's no time period for the crime to have occurred. So uh, that kind of opens it up to a lot of things. She will um, also be starting a support group in October, and so we will. Um, we're trying to hit staff meetings and really uh, have the community be aware that we have a counseling center and that we have a variety of ways to address your crisis and your trauma and that our goal is to make you feel comfortable and want want to come to get help the uh, stigma of mental health issues must be eradicated for us to have true integrated health mm -hmm. and true well-being we have to have people understand that um, the things that are making you sad and anxious are blocks to really living your best life. I think that's it. It's just that easy. No. Are there any questions for our presenters? Anyone? Do you think this is under the correct, uh, oh, go ahead. I'll save mine for later. Thank you for your presentation. I know that some of your team members are here today. And I wanted to ask a question about 
you started with the continuum of care from the 911 call. Can you tell a little bit about how you look at that process and what gaps you've had to address in that process so that you can make that connection with someone who might be in need of counseling? Um, people who uh, pick up the phone and call 911 because they have a crisis don't all need counseling. And people who need counseling don't always start with a 911 call. So I just want to be clear about that. So Anya and her uh, folks in the counseling program see um, a variety of community members and they don't, they're not all CARE 7 referrals. So I just want to be clear about that. But I think that the, it's so organic to do what we're doing that it just, to me, makes perfect sense and um, really is a best practice, a model that we get uh, surrounding communities call us and ask us about all the time. The fact that we are in the human services department is paramount because humans need a lot of things. And so because we reside in human services, we're able to connect humans with a lot of services. The challenge is that we're not co-located. And so it's best, especially for CARE 7 and victim assistance are together and then counseling is at a different facility. So sometimes that can be a barrier for our participants, but we, if Anya interacts with a client who has a transportation issue, we try to fix it. We have bus passes, we'll pick them up, we'll do a lot of different things. Um, if we have clients who aren't exactly ready for that process, that painful process sometimes of healing, then we wanna provide other services through support groups or art therapy or whatever it is that we can uh, help them heal. But I think that that's probably our biggest uh, barrier is just the co-location of our facilities so that people can just walk in off the street and get help. That would be a bonus for us. So um, I think also that while we love our interns and they provide a valuable resource for us, they leave. And so community members who have uh, the need for long-term services need to see the same counselor. So Anya is really busy. Did I answer your question? Okay. I was just gonna note that I think uh, it's appropriately under performance uh, council priority number two, but clearly I think it has connections to other things, quality of life, sen you know, sense of safety and security. How do you account for that as you think about what you're doing and how it could potentially have a broader impact on whether or not we achieve multiple council priorities? Is that a discussion you've had? We have lots of discussions, and what we end up doing is collecting more data than any person ever wants to see um, because we don't know how it's going to relate to other performance measures. I know that many of the performance measures in the human services department are interrelated and that we're all helping each other. You know, we're providing, uh, we at CARE 7, all facets, of all of the work groups in CARE 7 are providing innumerable services to our school district mm -hmm. as is our education work group and all of us, we're all working together. So I think that I would love to see um, some data collected on, and maybe everybody else is already doing this, but how we do impact other performance measures and how we are working together and collaborating, not just within human services because that's assumed, but how our performance measures are impacting the fire department. How what we're doing with the police department is uh, increasing the quality of life for so many people in our community that wouldn't be able to get it in another community. So I would love to see us have some way to start making connections. I can see it in my mind. Um, I think that with as many performance measures as we, as we have, uh, it seems like a big task, but I don't, I think we can do it. I think there's a way to do it. Great. Thanks. Thank you both. You did a great job and thank you for the work you do for our community. Um, just reading off uh, our phones about the latest tragedies, it seems like every day there's something new. Um, what are you seeing as far as your team's kind of approach to some of the trends regarding mental health um, for a community our size? Um, and what we could start looking at as far as being proactive about 
um, signs and things that we can do. So I think that from my perspective as the program manager, and I'll let Anya can talk about what she sees in, in counseling, but I see the need for awareness on all of our parts about the suffering of our fellow humans so that when we see somebody who's suffering, we know how to connect them, right? Even if it's just giving them the number to CARE 7 and then we can connect them to other human services or to something that's appropriate for them. Um, I see tremendous stress in our community and in our children. The stress experienced by our children is contributing to a myriad of problems, both uh, emotional, social and emotional, but also physical. And as we know, they're killing themselves uh, in an alarming rate. So we need to be, and that's why your question was not just about how are we impacting other performance measures, but how does this weave amongst all of our departments? It's important to understand not just the suffering and the needs of the people that we serve, but the needs of each other and how stressful it is to do the jobs that we do. And how can we support our um, fellow employees by helping them get through what they get through? So one of our strategies, which I think we left out a slide about strategies, but um, we really do want to develop supportive programs, not just for the people that live here, but for the people that work here. Mm -hmm. Because I know, um, I think I know how hard it is to every day be a firefighter or a police officer in the city and see the things that we see because we're seeing the same things. And so uh, we want to make sure that we're staying healthy so that we can help the people that we are responding to. And um, that's our hope is to grow our program, not only for the residents, but for each other. I think I'll just, I would add, um, you're asking, what do we see there at the counseling center? And, and Chris has touched on it. Um, the, ACEs, if you adverse childhood experiences and diffi basically difficult experiences that people live in their first 18, 18 years of life, we see that in our community and we see it with the clients that come into the counseling services. Um, so what do we do to address that? Um, well, for one, I really focus on finding people who understand trauma and adversity and know how to, how to deal with it. And so that's probably the biggest thing. And then what Chris was saying is like helping each other take care of ourselves so that we can help other people because the need is definitely there. The trends you see in the you know larger community is, is what we see there at, at counseling services. So really staying, when we talk about the need to stay informed on how to treat trauma, that's, that's the biggest thing that we can do. And that's my biggest focus with the people I select and, and the things that I choose to learn about. What we're seeing with the kids specifically in the school districts is incredibly high levels of anxiety and depression. And just the stress of being fill in the blank, being the best athlete, being the best student, being the best boyfriend, girlfriend, being the best at everything. And when they're not helping them to develop the skills to say, that's okay but right now that's not the message that they're getting through social media and just everything. I don't need to repeat it. You guys all know it, but, but it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And even though Tempe is a beautiful community, we suffer from some, some of the same things that we are seeing on the national news. Kids who just, they just can't. And parents who don't know how to help them. So we have to we really need to help everybody. It's a big job. <laughs> so thankfully, there's a lot of work groups that are together working, you know, in different uh, aspects of, of life. Elementary school, high school, adults, college, seniors, everything along the lifespan. That's really important for us to not just say, you know, come to counseling when you have a problem that you need to work through. It's have social and emotional support your entire life. And if you don't have that in your family, this is where you can find it. Okay. Anyone else? Very well done, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Speaking of employees, let's welcome up the next group. 
to present on performance measure 2.13, employee engagement. Hey, um, welcome everybody. I'm Aaron Peterson with the uh, Strategic Management and Diversity Office. And I'm John O'Connor, the Deputy Internal Services Director over Human Resources. So we're going to talk about the performance measure on employee engagement, and this one also is in the Strong Community Connections uh, Council priorities. The specific language on this one is to achieve ratings of very satisfied or satisfied with overall levels of employee engagement and job satisfaction greater than the average of national benchmark cities as measured in the Tempe Employee Survey. So the data that we have right now is from our 2016 survey. Hopefully all of you filled out the 2018. We don't yet have that information back. So the information we're sharing with you is from that first survey. And then we'll be able to update this here shortly uh, when we get that information back from the vendor. So why does this measure matter? So we're really measuring two things. One is employee engagement and one is job satisfaction. And I had a little bit of a light bulb moment as I was listening to the previous uh, presentation and why this really matters. Employees need help and guidance, and if we aren't asking them how well are we doing that as an organization, then we're not filling the gaps when they're there. So I'll share a personal example with you. I recognize most faces in this group, and most of you have probably been in one of my classes. What you might not know is I don't like public speaking, and I don't like being the center of attention. And you say, well, why do you do what you do? It's because I learned 15 years ago when I first started doing this that this was the way that I could give helpful information to my peers and make your life easier. So that you don't have to go out and find a good conflict management tool or crucial conversations or colors or something like that. We find it for you, we present it to you, now tomorrow your life is easier. And I think that fits perfectly with what you folks are trying to do both in the community as well as the organization. So engagement is talking about how engaged are our folks across the organization. A specific question on the survey is, overall, I'm satisfied with the level of employee engagement in my department. So we're asking employees to tell us, what are you seeing within your department? So it's outward looking. The other question is on job satisfaction. Are you feeling valued and rewarded? And a specific question there is, overall, how satisfied are you with your current job? So I think the, the significance of these questions is, as an organization, we can't help support people if we don't know where they're at. And so by having this tool and asking these questions, then we can help them make their jobs a little bit easier. So let me go over a little bit of the data. And again, it can be a little bit difficult to read. So the, uh, the, the options for answering the question is, I strongly agree or I agree, I'm neutral, or I disagree, strongly disagree, and things of that nature. So on the first question with uh, satisfaction, or I'm sorry, I need my glasses here. Okay, with engagement. The scores came back at 47.2%, which means that 47% of the employees said, I strongly agree with that. My, my team and my department is engaged. People are giving extra effort, and, and they're, they're doing a great, great job. Uh, we had 22% were neutral. They weren't quite sure which way to go with that. And then 22% felt that they disagreed or strongly disagreed with that. And then 8.1% said they didn't know. The results that we got on satisfaction is 78% felt that they were satisfied with their job. So that great news. And there wasn't a neutral option on that particular one, which is why you don't see a green line. And then 13% were, they did not agree with that or strongly disagreed. And then 8.6%, they didn't really know, didn't have an answer. So what is our target? How does that compare? So if we add that, by looking at the information that we can get from the vendor to say, how do we compare to other organizations that are asking this same question, we're actually doing a pretty good job. So the, the engagement, we're comparing to 32%, so we're st still above that. With satisfaction, we're comparing to 67%. Now, having said that, one of the limitations that we are looking at right now is this is an average. And I think we'd all agree that we don't want to be average at the city of Tempe. We want to know how can we be in those top percentages, whether that's a top 25%, top 10%, whatever that's going to look like. So we are continuing to find resources out there that will help us figure out what could these scores be and what is it that we really want to shoot for. So while we, it looks okay right now, we're going to continue to look at that and see if we can find um, additional resources and figure out what we should be aiming for. So as Aaron said, we don't want to be average here in the city of Tempe. We don't think we ever have been, and we want to continue that. So even though 
based on this data, we feel as though we're doing very well and we were very pleased to get those results. Um, we want to make absolutely certain that moving forward, we don't focus so much on these percentages as we focus on what are the issues that uh, are being brought forward, both by the individuals who say everything is pretty good, because that doesn't mean that they don't still have some issues there, um, but in particular, those employees that are not saying that or are not seeing that in their workplace, what are the issues there and how can we address those issues and how can we move the bar? So whether or not we make any changes, I mean, we thought, you know, maybe we need to increase the percentage that we want to go for as our goal. But that's really, I don't think, the point here. I think the point is to address the specific issues and make sure that we, at the very least, obviously maintain those, but you know, hopefully move it forward, but do that through some very sincere and um, concerted efforts where it's really needed. So um, after this survey, there was a working committee that was brought together um, to look at all of this information and to evaluate it. Um, and that cons uh, consisted of a lot of different people, but um, as many of you know who work at the city, we have the six-sided partnership, which basically represents all of our employees on some level. So we had representatives from that. Um, we had representatives from the city manager's office um, and from senior leadership outside of the six-sided partnership representation. Um, we had representation from each department because, as you know, we're a very diverse organization. We offer a lot of different services out there as a municipality. And we need to get input from all of those different areas because what's happening in public works might be very different to human services, to human resources, to um, community services. So we wanted to get that input from all departments. And we included other stakeholders as well. Whatever we felt we needed to pull in there to get the information, um, we brought those people into that. So there obviously were the two questions that Aaron referred to. Um, those were the two main questions that were asked, but there were other things that we were looking at within um, the survey, and there were six categories in particular that related sort of up those, to those two final questions. So just to let you know, and this really sort of focuses on the areas where we're trying to focus our efforts um, as we're trying to address and continue to improve um, the outreach to our employees. So the first is professional development and career mobility. Um, we have always in the city of Tempe offered a lot of different opportunities and benefits to employees to improve both their professional life and their personal life. And we want to continue to do that. Um, we do not have an issue here in Tempe with training somebody to go on and do something different. And if that means going to another city or to another organization, that's fine. We still want to offer that because we feel from the bigger perspective that we're assisting the community and we're working you know, in, at large um, in doing those sorts of things. Obviously, we would like people to stay within the city of Tempe, and so we do whatever we can to uh, assist with people looking to promote or looking to change their career or looking to move in a different direction. And so all of that development um, is very important, and we continue to enhance those benefits and that support. Um, organizational support, we look at how we can be out there in the organization, not just from human resources, but uh, in all the different areas in the city. I, I will point out that, you know, a few years ago we found out about Care 7. Um, we didn't know that those services were actually available to our employees. And I have to tell you, even though, thankfully, we haven't had to use them a lot, um, the services that they have provided for some of our employees when we've really been in crisis situations has been absolutely wonderful. And that's, I think, a great um, internal resource that we have here. Supervision and working environment. Obviously, um, there's a lot of things that can happen out there in the working environment, and the supervision that we provide to our line level employees in particular is um, vital. And so we have made a lot of effort over the last two or three years to do more training for our supervisors uh, and to really do whatever we can to get feedback with regards to the working environment and to address those issues as well. Uh, compensation and benefits, I mean, we all love to be here, but we also like to be paid, and we like to be paid fairly, and we want to have decent benefits. And um, we continue, even though we know, um, I have to tell you, I go to new employee orientation all the time, and we get consistently employees, particularly coming from the private sector, who say, wow, your benefits are really awesome, this is great. So that's good to hear, but that doesn't mean that we rest on our laurels. So <clears throat> we want to continue to... Uh, go out there and look at what other cities are doing, what other cities are offering, um, to have some idea what other organizations are offering, and to be able to enhance wherever we can the benefits and the compensation for our employees. 
Employee engagement is absolutely critical. If we don't have engaged employees, we're not going to know um, the good things and we're not going to know the bad things. So we have a lot of different opportunities here in the city for our employees to get engaged, whether it's in professional development, whether it's in being part of uh, being involved in what's happening with their compensation or their benefits, um, whether it's involved in MOU negotiations with city management, we want to continue to encourage that and we continue to look for new ways in order to increase that employee engagement. And peer relationships. Obviously, you know, even though our supervisors play a big role in our life, also those individuals that we work with and alongside, it's also an important part of our work life as well. And so we want to make sure that if there are issues that need to be addressed there, that we do that and that we also provide whatever services and whatever support we can to make sure that we can have cohesive um, work teams, that we can have employees that are engaged and um, happy and fulfilled in their work uh, and able to support each other. Um, it's important as well. Okay, so what are some of the challenges? Is this working? Here it is. Okay. What are some of the challenges that we face with regards to all of this? So first of all, perceptions are slow to change. So as Aaron pointed out, the two questions in particular that we're focusing on here, one of them is outward looking. So we're asking employees to look out and see what it looks like out there. Um, the other one is, you know, how do I feel about my job? So even though things may change over time, um, sometimes as humans, we take a little bit of time to trust. Uh, we take a little bit of time to sort of adapt. And so um, it is challenging. Um, you know, we try and do employee surveys, I think, every two years. Um, and so in a two-year period, there may have been things that have changed for the positive, but we're not necessarily always going to get responses um, that are uh, able to look at that and notice that those changes have happened. So sometimes that's a challenge. Also, we all know that currently we live um, in an environment that's always changing um, in our personal lives, in our professional lives. Things change so rapidly here, uh, we have to always keep on top of that. So it's a challenge for us in working with our employees to make sure that they're getting information that is relevant to what's happening now and not to something that happened years ago or that we're providing them resources and tools for their work um, that are relevant to what they need now and not something that's outdated. So all of those things um, are challenges in what we're doing to try to address the concerns to make sure that we create and continue to develop um, the sort of workplace that we want. Um, circumstances change, and also the other thing that is fairly consistent and constant is we are always getting new employees. We actually, um, as some of you probably know, have um, a lot of recruitments happening all the time, and we have a backlog of recruitment, so there's a lot of positions that we're filling at the city. We're always getting new employees coming in here, um, and so there's always going to be new needs. We always have to reevaluate things. We always, uh, always have to recognize that we can't just assume that what happened two years ago or five years ago is going to be relevant to our employee population now because that population has changed. So just quickly to talk a little bit also about um, where do we get our data from? So we've talked about, you know, we try and engage our employees as much as possible. And so there's a lot of different ways that we get information back to us about what's happening out there. Um, the employee survey is obviously a big one. Um, Six-sided partnership feedback. We have a lot of different meetings throughout the city. Some of them are at the department level. Some of them are at the city-wide level where we're interacting with our six-sided partnership um, employees, the ones that are representing those different groups, and we're getting feedback from them consistently about what's happening in the organization. Um, we have a supervisor's academy that we've been doing now. We're in our fifth year. Um, we have uh, 12 classes um, every six months. So over the course of a year, we have 24 classes. Those classes now are attended by both supervisors and non-supervisors, and we're actually finding that uh, the percentage of non-supervisory employees coming to those classes has increased significantly. And in those classes, they're very informal. We're trying to provide information about how we do things in Tempe, but we're also looking for feedback from our employees. New employee orientation. Obviously, it's a chance to touch base with our new employees, to give them the information that they need, but also to get feedback from them about any issues that they've seen in the short time that they've been here or any things that they think are great or whatever it might be. Um, so that's another area where we look to do that. 
Um, internal audit processes for feedback. We have an internal audit um, division here in the city and um, their job is to go out there in the organization and make sure that things are working, that things are appropriate, that if there are issues or concerns out there that they're addressed. And so through those processes as well, we get a lot of feedback with regards to um, what's happening in the organization. Um, we do exit interviews. We offer this to all of our employees. Um, they can either do it online anonymously if they choose to or if they want to actually meet with somebody from human resources we will go ahead and set up that appointment and they can meet with us and uh, provide us that feedback and we do look at that on a consistent basis and use that information to um, assess if there are areas where we really need to take a look and uh, make some changes and then committees we have a lot of committees in the city um, I think the city of Tempe in general, in the community, there are, is a lot of community involvement and that is also reflected here within our employee population. So we, every opportunity we can, if we are looking for input on anything that impacts uh, employee life in the city, then we will establish a committee and a group and we will get input um, before we make any decisions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a screenshot of our dashboard and then I'm going to move over to the computer and pull it up. So when we got the survey back, we had those two specific questions, but we also looked at this ad hoc committee, looked at all of the questions that we got back and identified that there were 11 of them with a little bit lower scores than the rest. And so that gave us some good feedback and things that we could really focus in on. Then through the power and the genius of our IT team, putting all of this stuff together, they also helped us to, to identify correlations. And let me explain what I mean by that. Most of you probably understand, but helped me to wrap my brain around it too. So correlations mean if somebody thinks something is really good, what else might they think is also really good? Same with bad. So if you like chocolate bars, you're probably going to like chocolate ice cream, right? Because those two things are going to be pretty correlated. But if you like chocolate bars, it doesn't mean anything about whether you're going to like strawberry ice cream. So one of the things that our IT folks helped us to map out is to look at all of these 11 questions with the lowest scores and see those that didn't give us great scores on engagement, were there others that also had a lot of not good scores? And same thing with, with involvement. So let me go over and I'll pull that up for you and show you. Okay, so the magic of technology means that I know how to do it. Here we go. Okay, so here is the actual dashboard. Oop, sorry, hovered over the wrong thing. So notice right here we have the, uh, the question on engagement. And again, our IT team was just so amazing for helping us do this. I can now select these two questions of the ones that the employees that said strongly disagree and disagree. What patterns does that create? Notice these three questions right here. Question 19, 32, and 34 also had a high number of people that said, I'm not happy with these. Question 19 is, I believe my opinions seem to count. Question 32 is, conflict in my work area is resolved effectively. And 34 is, I believe exceptional job performance is recognized. So you see how the, even as something as perception driven as a survey, we can still look to the data to see what can we really focus in on. Now we have strategies on all of these things. We've got some specific things we're going to try to do. And at the same token, this information gives us something really concrete to look at and say, if we're going to put the most focus on something, what would that be? It's those three questions in addition to the engagement and the satisfaction. And then the educated bet is you fix those three and those other two scores are going to go up at the same time. So a, a tremendous amount of power in looking at this. And with that, I'm going to come back over and we'll open it up to questions. Thank you. Any questions? I know these goals are being looked at objectively citywide, but um, maybe what could we do as a department or as a division to affect or influence some of those numbers to help achieve some of those goals? Uh, the, the ad hoc committee looked at all 11 of these questions and said, where would the proper ownership be? So as an example, when you look at question, I believe it was number 11 on my, my opinion seemed to count. We probably can't fix that at the organization level nearly as effectively as you can at the department level because what that really is telling us is that if I share my opinion and I never hear back, 
nobody closes the loop. I don't know, was it a good suggestion, a bad suggestion? Which direction did you go? Things of that nature. So yes, you can look at some of these things and say, I can still respond to these at a division level, department level, and, and move the needle for my area. Uh, one of the recommendations I would make is please feel free to reach out to me and say, are there citywide initiatives happening that I can mesh with? Uh, and and we, we certainly are trying to do that. One, one of the main things that we're doing, and that's uh, in internal services, is an employee, um, I just forgot the name, of the, the uh, performance Performance management? Performance management yeah. system is looking at, at something like that that gives the whole organization a way of kind of tracking some of these things. So there are some overarching uh, things like that as well. And, and, you know, I mentioned before, we recognize the fact that, you know, things may be very different um, with how you handle uh, your work, your workload, all those sorts of things, depending on what department you work in. So, I mean, in human resources, at least, we always take that into account. So even though something may work well in public works, um, that may not necessarily work well in community development. So we will certainly always work with departments to uh, tailor things or to, to look at what we need to do specific to what the needs are in that particular area. Other questions or comments? Eagerly awaiting the 2018 results? Yes. Yeah, we are very Anxiously. eagerly. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it'll be uh, sometime in October, if I'm remembering correctly, November 1st. So we'll have the data November 1st. Great. All right. Well done. Send us your ideas and suggestions to Tempe Accelerates at Tempe.gov and visit us at Tempe.gov slash Tempe Accelerates.